Hello and welcome to a new video about Primatics. This time we are going to talk about the basic layout or the basic layout, yeah, the basic design of a Primatic control system. Actually, it's the basic design of every control system, but right now we learn it about Primatics. Eh? So, Primatic control systems are divided into two parts. There's the control part. And then there is the energy part, or the power part. Okay. Those are the two parts which usually can be identified. Control part. And the power part. And in between, there might be something which is uh, gaining the signal, signal gain, huh? some sort of amplifier. Signal amplifier. Huh? So, Sometimes this is necessary simply to take the signals from the control part, which are usually low in energy, convert them and do the stuff in the power part. Huh? What is the power part? The power part can be divided into two sub-elements. Huh? There is the switching element, which is switching power on and off. Okay. And then there's the working element, which is really doing the stuff. The switching element, these are usually valves. Yeah? And working elements are some sort of pneumatic drives, like pneumatic motors, pneumatic cylinders and so on. And then they are influencing something in the real world. Okay? So the switch element will switch power to the working element, the working element will move, do something in the real world, and that's it. Yeah? What is done in the real world yeah, is taken by the control part. Yeah? So there is some, some part inside which can record the status of the real world, a signal recording. signal recording. And then there is something which is processing those signals. Signal processing. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So the signal recording is determining the actual status of the real world and the signal processing is processing those status signals yeah, determining what to do, put it maybe by the use of a signal amplifier, the switching element and the working element is influencing the real world, yeah, which can then be recorded by the re signal recording. Yeah. Signal recording, this might be mechanical by the use of some levers or something like this, can be pragmatic by the use of nozzles which might be open or might be closed depending on if an item is there or not. Yeah? And also signal processing can be mechanical with the use of some levers, uh, gears or something like this, and can be pragmatic as well yeah, with the use of, of valves. We will learn this. Yeah? We will learn this. This is the typical structure of a control system. When we are using those things in pneumatics, 
It's a permatic control system. Permatic control system, signal recording mechanical, permatic, signal processing mechanical, permatic, switching elements, usually some valves, working elements, cylinders or turbines or, or uh, permatic motors. Okay. So we do have different working elements here. Yeah? We do have different working elements. We have, for instance, rotating working elements. Yeah? So this can be motors, can be turbines. Yeah? Those things, rotating working elements, can be used to screw things, can be used to drill things, can be used to grind things. Rotating working element. Huh? Then we do have linear moving parts, linear drives called cylinders. How they are working we will also learn. Yeah? Cylinders, linear movement, can be used to clamp something, uh, can be used to move something, push it somewhere else. Yeah? And therefore, yeah, we can supply items into a machine or eject items from the machine, yeah? supply and eject stuff. Hmm? Linear drives. Then they are hammering drives. Yeah, hammering. For instance, pneumatic hammer, jack hammer, something like this, hammering dive. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Here, those things, we can chisel. We can chisel them. Yeah. We can cut parts with hammering drives. Yeah. We can press parts. Uh, we can punch things uh, and we can apply reve. Yeah. Bing, 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 hammering parts. Also very often used. Yeah? I mean, a lot of time on construction sites you hear those things, right? Hammering parts. Then, of course, there are nozzles, often used nozzles. Nozzles, small hole somewhere, blow things away yeah? to clean stuff, yeah? to blow dust, chips, something like this, yeah? dry, yeah? dry things, yeah? nozzles. Yeah? So these are so the working elements, the fields of application, you know, there is, for instance, uh, surface engineering. Yeah. Spray painting, spray painting, big topic. Spray paint, coat something with the help of compressed air, spray it on. Yeah. Then, of course, sandblasting. Clean something with the help of air and some sand, abrasive material. Yeah? Surface engineering. Then we have length testing. So there are pneumatic length testing measurement devices. Yeah. Measurement and testing. Yeah. And then, last but not least, we have conveyor technology. Okay. Okay. 
a lot of times we want to get for bulk materials. A lot of times we want to, to bring bulk material from one position to another position. I can use a little like a vacuum cleaner and blow it through some tubes and bring it into the silo or whatever. Yeah? Blow the stuff simply to another via guided things like tubes. Yeah? Blow it into another location. Conveyor technology. Pneumatic conveyor technology. Yeah, so this is the basic structure of a control system and these are the applications. Why are those applications so, so, you know, widespread? Yeah? Why is this? Yeah? Because we have a certain amount of benefits. Yeah? Advantages, benefits, we have a plus side. of pneumatic technology. One big advantage is that compressed air can easily be transported in tubes, hoses or something like this from one position to the other position and can be stored. Okay, so compressed air can be transported and stored. Storing pressure energy in some sort of pressure tank or something like this. The air balloon, yeah, I've stored dramatic energy. Yeah. Transported and stored. Electrical energy cannot be that easily stored. Okay, Can be transported, yes, but also with losses. Stored, it's easier to store compressed air. Then, if we want to use compressed air or pneumatic system somewhere, simply somewhere, yeah, it is rather easy because we have the possibility of mobile compressors. Okay. Air is simply available everywhere. I just need the compressor. The compressor is compressing air and I have there my pneumatic system. This is not that easy with electrical generation, yeah, power generation, and also not that easy, easy with hydraulic power generation because then it, with hydraulic power generation I at least have to take oil or the hydraulic fluid with me. Mobile compressors, pneumatic, rather easy. Yeah. Big advantage of, of, of uh, uh, pneumatics is that compressed air is not sensitive to temperature change. Yeah? Cold air is air, hot air is also air. Yeah? Now, if we have oil, coiled oil, is very stiff, warm oil is very fluid. So this is changing. In hydraulic, the things are changing. In pneumatic, air is air. Yeah? No, not sensitive, almost not sensitive. Yeah? Pneumatics can also be easily be easily be used in an, an explosive atmosphere. You know, there are no sparks. Like in electrical drives, you usually have sparks somewhere which could ignite an explosion in an explosive atmosphere. Yeah? Here we can use it. Can be used in explosive atmosphere. Okay? It's easy. Yeah? No sparks, no danger. Yeah? Then we usually have high speeds. Pneumatic drives are usually rather speedy ones. Yeah? So there, if there is a piston, pistons can move up to 3 meters per second. Yeah? Motors, 30,000 RPMs. Mm, there is already something here. Yeah? Turbines. 
if this is not enough, like example at the dentist, yeah, 450,000. 460,000 RPMs is already pretty high, yeah? Usually 200,000 or something like this at the dentist, yeah? But 450,000 would be possible, yeah? These high speeds and forces and so on, yeah? They can be continuously adjusted. This is also a big benefit, you know? You can adjust a little bit more force, a little bit less force, a little bit more speed, a little bit less speed and so on, and this continuously. Continuously adjustable and speed and force. Okay. Also, it's overload safe. I can add load, I can add load, I can add load. In worst case, a pneumatic cylinder, pneumatic motor, pneumatic drive is stuck. Then it is not moving anymore. But nothing else will happen. And if a pneumatic cylinder or pneumatic drive is stuck, it has the highest power it can ever has, have. So it has the high starting forces. Electrical drives, not comparable, yeah? not overload safe. If you stop electrical drive, it usually is getting hot. And also the starting force on electrical drives will never be that high like then in operation. Here we have those. Yeah? We also have a good weight to power ratio. So th the power of an, an pneumatic tool it is very lightweight compared to the power it can deliver. There is not, there is no necessary iron core, additional copper or something like this. Good weight to power ratio. And it's easy to repair. That's the plus side. You see, this is why we are using pneumatics. And now we, you hear why we are not only using pneumatics, but also different things, yeah? because there are also disadvantages. Of course, there's a minus side. Yeah? And one big minus side is that there is a lot of noise. Yeah? Pneumatic drives are noisy things. Somewhere oh, air is exhausted and so on. Yeah, so there is a lot of noise. Making maybe additional measures for noise cancelling necessary, which would not be necessary if I use other technology. Yeah. Then there is always the change of leakage. Yeah. Then we have energy losses. The overall, the overall uh, efficiency of such things is usually not that high. Yeah? Then we have oil dust. Yeah? There are things moving, things are usually lubricated somehow. Yeah? Those lubrications, uh, the, the exhaust hair is, is just spread into the environment and there might be oil dust, oil nebula inside, oil aerosols, or also it's spray painting and so on. We have simply aerosols, so this is environment, environmental important. Yeah? Oil dust, yeah? aerosols. environment. If there is no oil, this is also not an issue. However, if there is oil, sometimes we have oil in the, in the air and so on, this might be an issue. And then we said uh, continuously adjustable speed and force and so on, and we said high starting force. However, the maximum forces of pneumatic drives are usually not that high. Yeah? So the, the maximum Of 
forces are rather small. Low. Yeah. Why is this? Because the operating pressure is usually lower than 10 bars. Yeah. If I have low pressure, as a comparable relatively low pressure, I have relatively low forces. Hydraulic systems can be 1000 bars, you know, this is something else. Yeah. Maximum forces are rather low, so there. Yeah. However, this must not be a disadvantage. If we have something which needs to be handled with care, this might be an advantage also. Yeah. However, if you need high forces, it's not possible. Yeah. And also, we set here adjustable speed, however, the speed is strongly load depending. If you move something light wide, it's speedy. If you move something heavy, it's getting slower and slower and slower and slower. Yeah? So, the more load you have to handle, the slower a pneumatic drive will be, simply. Yeah, load depending behavior. This might be a big issue on some things. When you depend on constant movement, not possible. Yeah. Speaking of constant movement, also big disadvantages is that slow and smooth, steady movement is simply not possible with pneumatics. Yeah. If you want to have something moved slow and steady yeah, without stopping, forget pneumatics. Pneumatics will always move, then will stand still. Then move, stand still. Yeah? And hydraulics, for instance, it will move smooth and steady. Yeah? So, slow and steady movement is not possible. If you can live with those things, with these disadvantages, yeah, or even take advantage of this downside, maximum force, for instance, yeah, then pneumatic controls can be used. And as we have seen, they are used rather often. Yeah. So next time we are going to talk about uh, how such pneumatic systems are usually looks like, how they are built, yeah? which parts are necessary to reach those structures and those things. Yeah? We will make a try of an overview of this. So we'll be there next time. For this time, say thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.